Many of us enjoy a nice and refreshing dip in the cool ocean on a hot and sunny summer's day. But when we look a bit closer, this idyllic picture starts to crumble. There's so much life in the ocean that you will never be able to swim alone, and I'm not talking about sharks, fish and other people. I'm talking about organisms so tiny that they are able to swim in and out of your swimsuit as well as crawl around on your skin without you even noticing it. So let's see what hides in your trunks after a swim. The first organism I want to show you is a crustacean called an ostracod. These ones are about the size of a grain of sand. Some species can reach up to 30 millimeters in size. These animals have some weird anatomy, with the males having two penises, fitting the females corresponding two genital openings. And if that isn't weird enough for you, the individual sperm cells can be up to six times as long as the ostracod itself, and are therefore coiled up inside of the testicles before mating. This one is a small isopod crustacean called Idotia. You might be familiar with one of the Idotia's relatives on land, the woodlouse. The woodlouse is much larger than this animal, but they share the same blueprint for body structure. The isopods, including the woodlouse and Idotia, all have four jaws and seven pairs of legs. Some other tiny animals you are probably swimming around with are mites. These tiny eight-legged monsters look like something straight out of a horror movie, and with good reason. A relative of the mite is the spider, and their mouth parts have roughly the same structure, which means that mites are able to bite. Some mites feed on plants and fungus, while others feed on animals. But don't worry, mites are too small to bite or hurt humans, for the most part. Roundworms or nematodes are common inhabitants in the soil, but they are also present in large numbers in the ocean. And even though some species can be parasitic, they serve an important function in a healthy ecosystem by decomposing organic material and recycling nutrients. Here you are able to see the mouth of a nematode magnified more than 300 times. Another type of worm you might be swimming around with is a bristle worm. These worms have been around for over 500 million years and live everywhere on the planet. Some species have even been found in the deepest parts of the ocean, more than 10 kilometers beneath the surface. When a bristle worm hatches from its egg, it's in a larval state, like this one. It will slowly add segments and turn into an adult. The tiny hairs on its body are called bristles, and they are made up of a polymer called chitin, which is the same molecule that makes up the exoskeleton of insects. There are over 10,000 known species of bristle worms, and more than 98% of them live in salt water. The ocean is filled with different kinds of crustaceans, including crabs, shrimp and lobsters. These tiny ones are called copepods. Most copepods are around 1 to 2 mm in size, but the largest species can be up to 10 mm. As you can see, some of them carry around a sac, and these are egg sacs. When the eggs hatch, a tiny larval form of a copepod is born, called nucleus. These resemble crabs and mold several times before reaching adulthood. Copepods make up a huge part of the plankton in the oceans and some say that these tiny animals form the largest animal biomass on the planet. This is another type of crustacean called a gamarus, commonly known as a scud. This one is carrying eggs which will hatch in a few days. Here is one of the newborns, only a couple of hours old and with a size of only about a single millimeter it can easily find its way into your swimsuit unnoticed. Crustaceans don't have blood like humans, instead they have a fluid called hemolymph. And here you are able to see the individual cells called hemocytes circulating inside of the antenna of a gamarus. The hemocytes play an important role in the animal's immune system, and the fluid carries oxygen and nutrients. This might not come as a shock to you, but there are a ton of snails in the ocean, slithering around on the seafloor 
looking for bacteria and decaying material for it to eat. But a newly hatched snail is microscopic and can easily be suspended in the water. So there are not only tiny snails crawling around on your feet, there are probably also microscopic baby snails in your swimsuit. This is a close-up of the mouth of a snail. Roundworms and bristleworms are not the only types of worm you might find in the ocean. There are also a lot of flatworms and other microscopic worm-like creatures hiding in the sand underneath your feet and swimming around in the water next to you. Many flatworms don't have an anus and therefore get rid of their waste through their mouth, essentially throwing up poop. Some species have incredible regenerative abilities. If one worm is cut into two, both parts will regenerate, one growing a new tail end and the other one a new head. Even though some flatworms can be parasites, most are harmless to humans. The last thing I want to show you are single-celled organisms. These are incredibly abundant everywhere in the ocean and can take on many different sizes and shapes. Some are known as ciliates. These use tiny hair-like projections called cilia to move and feed. Another kind of single-celled organism is diatoms. These are a type of algae and are extremely important as they produce around 20% of the oxygen on the planet. If conditions are right, single cell organisms can proliferate rapidly. These two are in the middle of dividing, where one cell splits into two. If you want to help me make more and better videos and get your name listed here, you can support me on patreon.com and I will put a link to that down in the description. If you have any questions or ideas to what you want to see under the microscope in the future, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching.